The whole of my uh, subject bias in school was towards the sciences and uh, particularly towards chemistry and uh, all of my examinations were science based and then when I was about 14 I became interested in archaeology as a, as a hobby and um, but I continued, I thought there was no opportunity to work with archaeology. This was in 1949, just after the Second World War. And um, I had actually received an appointment uh, in a laboratory, which would in due course lead to um, a science degree in chemistry. And I hoped to progress that way. Now, in my last term at school, I undertook an excavation uh, in a place about 11 miles from where I lived, uh, at Worthing. And following the excavation, I went to the museum to see if they had any finds from the uh, site so that I could write it up properly. And they had created the post of museum assistant there a week before. So I had the post of uh, museum assistant. I took up post uh, in February 1950, and uh, I was there until 1960. In 1959, the Museums Association Conference was held in Worthing, and I had done quite a lot of display work. I was, perhaps I should explain, the only full-time member of museum staff. I had done quite a bit of display work, and because of uh, uh, that, the work became known to the profession at large. And I'm sure that was an important factor that when the deputy directorship at Sheffield became available, I was invited to apply. And uh, in due course, I took up that post as deputy director. Now, while I was at Sheffield, uh, I was doing quite a lot of research into the Bronze Age of the Peak District. And after a few years, I was invited by the university uh, to accept an honorary lectureship uh, in the new department of archaeology there and uh, to lecture mainly on museum studies um, and, of course, also to examine undergraduates as well. Now, uh, this came as a surprise to me because I was not a graduate. But um, the external examiner for the first degrees at that time was Terence Powell, who was uh, head of the Department of Archaeology uh, at uh, Liverpool University. And when he heard about my research, he suggested that I turn that into a research degree. And uh, in, in that, that is how uh, I eventually became a graduate in prehistoric archaeology. From uh, Sheffield, um, I went to become director of museums in Liverpool. I have always been interested in museum cataloguing. And I chose that as the topic for the, my Museums Association diploma thesis. There was nothing really novel in this apart from uh, a suggestion that in archaeological excavation work the numbering of 
finds should actually be coordinated with the museum which was going to hold them so that they came to the museum already numbered in a form compatible to the museum's own system. And that approach certainly we applied in Worthing uh, and uh, I believe has been applied el elsewhere as well. But that was the only novel aspect uh, of that particular uh, exercise. But when uh, I was at Sheffield, uh, my interest was still very much in the documentation of collections. And um, largely, I think, because of my archaeological work, in archaeology, the principle of association is very important. And the issue then arose as to how best to bring out associations in a body of information which was kept in either numerical order or in subject order. And it was from that that I was introduced to the principle of feature cards where you still had a numerical record um, but you recorded the information from that record by punching out the relevant number that you had given the specimen. And so that was quite an important tool for me um, also in the research that I was doing uh, for the research degree at Liverpool. And it was really based on that that I prepared uh, a paper for the Museum's Journal in 1965, which drew attention to different ways of manipulating museum information and recording museum information and the needs to create a national index with hindsight a, um, a massive suggestion. But that was not a new suggestion when the Museums Association was formed in 1888, one of the objectives was to prepare a compendious index of museum collections. However, that article generated uh, some interest, uh, which resulted in a symposium which we held the following year in Sheffield, in 1966. But uh, the papers of that uh, conference were then published in the museum's journal. And one of the recommendations out of the conference was that the museum's association should uh, investigate in detail the issues of museum information. That uh, led to the establishment of a committee um, which had the rather horrible uh, acronym of ERGMA, um, which was the Information Retrieval Group of the Museums Association. And uh, that committee duly met. Um, I found myself chairing it. But in due course, it led to the creation of a series of recording cards which um, were structured and compatible with each other, but which covered all of the different disciplines, or the main disciplines, uh, in uh, museums. To that end, we linked up 
with uh, Dr. John Cutbill, who um, was a postdoctoral researcher at Cambridge, uh, who was looking particularly into the issues of geological data, and was based in the at the Sedgwick Museum. Now, uh, with him, uh, we developed what uh, we called the museum communication format, which was a, a, a program, a structure, if you like, to have between two systems so that their information fed into the communication format and could be read together. Now, while all this was going on in the 1970s, there was increasing interest in, among museums in the UK um, to use our record cards. But hardly anyone had any computing capability. So the record cards were designed to use manually, but they meant that the information uh, was being structured uh, into an interdisciplinary uh, context. Well, uh, the Museums Association took on this work of marketing the cards. Uh, it became quite big business. We had a series of discussions, uh, but more particularly with the Museum and Galleries Commission, who eventually uh, decided to set up a unit uh, which was funded by the regional organisations in the UK, uh, which were government funded. Uh, they were known as the area councils and the national museums. And with those two groups of people providing uh, funds, we were able to set up um, the museum documentation unit, which in the end was incorporated into an association and became the Museum Documentation Association. That formed in 1977, and of course continues the work as the Collections Trust. It became the Collections Trust in 2008. So, um, at that stage, having achieved a national organisation, uh, many of us felt that we had met our objective and were very pleased to leave it to others. <laughs>